All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking time to hop out on, like I said, a beautiful Monday morning. Um, the Morse Texan Monday's call. Like I said, the very first one. Um, I get to launch with a, a nice and wonderful special co-host, uh, Luis Moyano, um, based out of Florida. So, like I said, he's uh, new to the I IFG family, but uh, he is no stranger to writing ALP. I'll tell you that. So, um, like I said, uh, we decided to merge our calls. He also had a call on Monday, and um, talking about some similar items, mainly the mortgage protection piece. So uh, we figured, was it not only in our best interest as agency managers, but also best interest of the partnership program and IFG as a whole to put our efforts into a, co a collective bin and be able to share with everyone on a weekly basis of what's going on, how we're doing it, and really just take a deeper dive into the mortgage protection space as our main focus. And then also do some of the subsets of the final expense, LIS, Medicare, different things that we are also doing um, inside of our each individual uh, brokerages and agencies. Um, that what's really working for us and how are we doing it? Uh, what are things that you can take away from us as well as opening up to you guys to get those questions? Because there's a lot of questions come up throughout, throughout the week, whether it's on the group meets, on the Innovative and Friends, or just via text and phone calls. So it just only makes sense to have a community platform. We can all come together on a weekly basis for 30 minutes to it to an hour and really kind of break down some of those questions and give you guys as much value as we possibly can. Um, so with that, like I said, today, um, our main focus is going to be attitude and mindset. Um, it's something I'm very passionate about. Luis is also very passionate about that. So we're kind of going to give each of our different takes on that piece of it. And then I'm going to ask him a couple questions. Um, like I said, about these last couple of weeks he's, he's, he's been having, we get a couple takeaways. And then from there, we're going to transition to an open Q&A for about 10 to 15 minutes. Just to really said, just we want to make this as interactive as possible. So as much feedback and as many questions and things you guys are bringing to the actual table, the, the uh, better. That's going to help us steer what we're talking about to your exact situation and really be boots on the ground, connected to you guys and what you guys are dealing with and give you guys good solutions or good ways to navigate those different issues on that day-to-day -day basis. So uh, without wasting any more time of me yapping, uh, Luis, I'm going to pass it to you, brother. Um, good morning, Luis. Good morning. What's going on, Marcus? Thanks, man. Uh, hey, guys, everyone that's on the call, thank you so much for getting on here. I know that we all have these Mondays to get our day started. So like Marcus brought up, we're going to touch really on the mortgage protection piece how to be able to maximize what you guys are doing with it. We will dabble a little bit into final expense and some of the other things that have to do with just our business. But our goal is to have everyone just write as much possible business as you can, you know? And what are those things that you need to start doing or be doing or be more consistent on to, to have that much more success? So just a little bit about me. I've only been doing insurance next month will make it officially two years so let's throw a big party for me okay but yeah and that's it just two years just two years uh, in the business my first year i issued paid uh, a little over 260 uh this year i'm still gunning for the 400 000. i took a little time off i can put a little policies here and there during that COVID scare uh, and that's pretty much the time that i ended up coming over to ifg I could not be happier about where I am, the position that we're in, and this partnership model that we're at, that we're in. So that's just a bit about me. Um, as far as the things we're going to be touching, like Marcus said, we're going to get a little bit deeper into the mindset. But I just briefly want to touch on the program that we are a part of. If you guys are with IFG and maybe not part of the partnership program, obviously you're more than welcome to this call. This calls that are going to be for training and they're going to be specific to not just product, but you know, a segment on what we're focusing on are also going to be shifted around the partnership model. So if you're not on it, I would really strongly tell you to consider jumping into the partnership. I mean, getting a 12 month advance as opposed to 75% month advance, right? Even if you're taking a slight commission hit on the numbers, you're going to notice that it's going to be a 25% influx into your business, meaning that you're going to be able to see more money this month. I'm a business owner. Marcus is a business owner. You guys should also be business owners of your own business and know that the more cash flow you have right now 
it's going to be the most valuable thing you can consider or think about just because it's going to allow you to keep burning your business. You're going to pay your bills. You're going to have money for your leads and you're going to be able to reinvest into your business. So going into that, let's jump in a little bit into mindset markets. You got any questions for me as far as that goes? No, man. Uh, just to piggyback off the partnership, man. I mean, it's like I said, um, most of my guys said, unfortunately, I've been in the business for almost six years now. So um, I think my top grossing year was, I want to say it was about almost 260, almost a two, the two, 270. I was in my prime writing actual business. Now I'm kind of taking a step back, more of a managerial role. I'm still doing it on my personal pen. Um, but uh, like I said, my goals are usually, uh, it's not as lofty as, as the 400,000 is from a managerial standpoint. I mean, if I can put down I mean, 150 to 175 in my personal pen every single year, that's a killer year for me in terms of everything else. But with the agency doing, last year we did about 1.2 million in a business. So, um, or trash that, 2.3 million, uh, kind of the actual annuity biz we had in there, over 1.5 in annuities last year. So, um, so business is booming, business is great. I will piggyback. I mean, what I'm teaching my guys as well. I mean, especially as the market's shifting, especially with COVID, there is not a better time to sharpen your ax and have multiple product lines. Having multiple pieces inside the space, inside in terms of the whole insurance world as a as a as a whole, um, to be able to leverage multiple things. So once you master one, obviously you want to master the first one, mortgage protection, final expense, whatever the, the your niche is. But having those other tools, like the Medicare side of it, uh, the health license in general, it opens up so many more, more doors, especially on the partnership program. I mean, the free leads, especially during now during the AAP eight, eight season, uh, the preset appointments. I mean, there's so much value being given to for an agent's, what I would honestly say is free money. Why don't you go to, you go to work and you put your hat down or you put, you put your head down and you put your, your Medicare hat on. Um, you're making some free money. There's no other better way to actually do it. And that's some of the perks of that program kind of built off of that Medicare piece of it to where literally um, I'm an M MP guy through and through. I know nothing uh, except for the surface level of, of Medicare. And I was able to scratch out an extra $2,000 last year of renewable money every single year. Just by asking my existing clients, I was already seeing that qualified that were over the age of 65. What do you have in place for your Medicare supplement? That little simple, simple question during the months of October to de December netted me an extra $2,000, not only front end money, but also I'm going to have that same renewal coming come January 6th, just by asking that one little question last year. So um, it's a huge tool. And like I said, it's one of the things that the program is built off of. But um, like I said, it's, it's something definitely to check out. If you haven't seen it yet, ask ask questions, reach out. We'd be more than happy to explain it to you, but um, it's going to be a game changer for a lot of people's businesses from an entrepreneurial mindset, but also from that residual down the road mindset as well. Um, yeah. So I don't want to take up too much more uh, time, but yes, please um, kick us off for the mindset and attitude. Cause that makes it, you've had a killer week. And the one thing you told me was that it's not so much about the numbers, the numbers come, but it's how I approach the week going into it and your attitude when dealing with leads. Can you touch on that and kind of, Break that down for us. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think that uh, everyone that's on this call right now is just looking to be able to learn the way to become as consistent and constantly moving. So the biggest word on what I just brought up is consistent, right? We literally got to find the way to consistently have leads come in. This is a business. If you treat it as your business, this will be the most profitable business you can ever be a part of, Right. Getting out there and closing a sale, that part, it's easy. I mean, at least to me, it's almost like second nature. You just got to go out there and be personable. But I can't get in front of people if I don't have the data to be able to touch on and follow up on. So the consistency behind the lead flow, it's going to be your number one. Let's back up a little bit. Let's go ahead and go into talking about the mindset of this. Because, and, and Marcus, you could probably agree with me, this business will make you guys have tough skin. I don't care how you view it. There are days that you're going to go, and you're going to sit with five people, and you're not going to be able to close a single one of them. You're going to door knock, and you're going to have the door slammed in your face. Your appointments are not going to be there, and you're just going to feel like mentally and emotionally drained. Pat yourself in the back when that happens, and be happy that it happened. 
right? Because those are the things that are going to make you a better agent. You're going to be able to take that next step forward from being able to have those failures. So if you don't have that happen to you, one, it's going to piss you off. It pisses me off when that happens. And I try not to have it happen as much as possible. But it's going to help you lock down your appointments better. It's going to help you have more appointments. And it's going to help you be consistent in leads. A lot of the times people have that mind frame. And here's where we go talking a little bit about the mindset, right? And they think of leads as a cost. They think of leads as a expense. But we really have to view leads for what they are, right? Where I came from, we always spoke about how you cannot go out there and open up a pizza shop. You can't get a restaurant without buying food every single day or every single week. If you don't have that pizza dough, you're not making any pizzas. You're not selling, you know, when Marcus calls you to order for his whole family, he wants to get six pies and you can't give him anything. That's because you didn't buy the dough. So guys, let's go ahead and put those in our pockets. Let's make sure that we have that and that we have enough at all times to be able to get out there. Now, going back to that, right? Everyone's in a different position. Some people have money and some people make the mistake of having money and just overly spending on leads and just like, throwing it out there and not maximizing it. So there's gonna be a sweet spot that we're gonna look for. You're gonna be able to, if you have money, buy leads and don't be shy about buying leads, but don't just over buy leads, like literally work the leads that you buy. And if you don't have money, then you should have more time. And then we can go ahead and get you some second chance leads. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys some nuggets. So go ahead and you know, jot this down. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I do for leads and how I go about it. But it is important, like imperative for me to have a good lead flow. Focusing only on mortgage protection right now, I partner up and I call our lead department. All of you guys should have that contact for Chad Dawkins and find out in your marketing, your area, where can you go ahead and do some mail drops? So I buy $60 leads, buy per lead. Every time I get one, it's 60 bucks. I've been averaging, and this month was a little bit slower, but I've been averaging around 50 just out of that mail drop. So 50 times $60, I'm looking at around 3,000 bucks right there. But that's just not enough leads. So I needed to go ahead and get a second. I reached out to a company that offers mailers that go out to second chance or, or retro leads. These are leads that have either purchased or refinanced a house 18 months to five years. They're no longer getting hit up by nine, 10, 15 different companies the moment they buy. Now they've been in their house for a little while, their income's a little more consistent, their expenses on how much you're putting into the home, you know, that's gonna be a little bit more stable. So I go ahead and I do those. I drop mail on those every two weeks religiously. Like no matter what happens, if I don't work the week before, I still drop that mail, it's that important. So every two weeks on a Monday, I have it set up on my calendar through my Gmail for them to automatically get a lead request for them to send me the data and I tell them how many mailers to send out. We send out, I think it's 2000 mailers every other Monday and that yields around a 1% return. And that costs you 1200 bucks, right? Uh, 1,020 to be a, to be Okay, a so you get a little bit of a discount. Yeah, so let me, let me touch on that for a second because I can explain that. So I, I did the exact same thing. So I have my fresh data source, which is my brand new mortgages. That's what the $60 lead is, which depending on the vendor, they go from 52 bucks all the way up to 69.50, depending on what company we end up going with, what, whatever is available in your actual area. The secondary is through a company called Plum. So we mail, let's call it older data. It's, it's the data that the people aren't gonna tell you that they just moved in and they're still trying to figure out their actual bills. So it's a little bit older data. It's not being hounded by every other front end company out there. You think of any three letter agency, they're mailing the front end data. It's a way to kind of get through that clutter and deal with some clients that aren't being bum, bum, bombarded. But like I said, it's about 1180, 1120 uh, as for a 2000 piece drop, um, which you can set the demographics, you can set the mortgage amounts, you can set the zip codes. I mean, you've got a lot of flexibility. Um, don't skew it too much because the, the system we have in place, the metrics 
they tend to pretty much work uh, universally. There might be a couple of tweaks or uh, had to switch up the zip code slightly depending on how much data is in your actual area. But I do the exact same thing. Um, but it's, you want to have that front end mail as well as that, that, that actual back end mail. Yeah. Because the front end is going to have that, once there's so much the competition, I mean, we're usually first or second inside the house, depending on when that client fills up that actual letter and puts it back into the actual mailbox. But I mean, I just moved. I've already gotten two or three letters from the same place. Mail code has been blowing my house up with uh, leads, um, which is for one, one particular company. I'm not going to say their name, but I already know what companies mail me the actual leads here. What that tells me, there's one of those agents locally. So I need to go talk to that, to that actual guy. So, but um, it's extremely important to have a consistent lead flow because on, on average in, in, in Ohio, which I still have a couple of vendors on, I usually in, in or get between probably about 10 to 12 leads every single week, which I would agree with on, on weeks. Not enough leads for me, what I'm doing, it makes it perfect for me. It, keep, it keeps me enough busy to where my appointment setter, she's dialing, she's happy, she's making money, and I'm just showing up to houses when they want me to show up. So um, extremely ben ben beneficial. But on that note, um, just kind of off a subtle tangent, you have to be able to book your own quality appointments first before delegating or paying for an actual appointment setter. That's the number one question I get. How do I get an appointment setter? I didn't have one until this past year. So what? Know. Yeah, February, I think, or March. So um, I've been doing it myself for the past five years. I just got to a point where I scaled enough to where it wasn't beneficial on my time uh, to be able to take myself out of the field for those three to seven hours every single week to make those phone calls. Um, but yeah, you can go back to what you were talking about, Luis. Sorry. Okay. No, no worries. Man. So that's that's great. Great point on getting just get comfortable on the phones. So, but I now I know. And now I'm going to have 40 I'm sorry, I'm going to have 80 to 100 leads coming in every single month from people that just filled it out, put it back in the mail, and sent it over. So normally, the sit-down ratio is going to be a little bit better. But even with those leads, you're still going to find those people that just don't want to sit down with you, don't want to give you the time of the day, they don't remember filling it out, whatever BS they can go ahead and throw your way. You door knock them, you work them, you pass them on to one of your downlines, that's still a lead that they filled out that they are actually interested to find out exactly what it is. And then there's going to be some people that you just can't help, and that's fine. With all that, as long as you're still having your lead flow and you're working it, this business is so lucrative that you're going to be able to schedule and, and, and make money. So right now, I mean, the last couple of weeks have been insane for me, guys. And I've, I've uh, submitted 20,000 give and take or right around there. What's going on, gentlemen? Um, but that's going to be the most important part, right? Having the strong, strong lead flow. You guys see Pete Fournier in the back of Marcus. He gave me a good strategy also on how to just kind of retarget some additional leads. So I even throw that on too. I'll buy cheap, cheap leads for like 35, 45 cents a piece. And then I'll mail out to them directly and I'll follow up and I'll call. I'll do about 25 every week just so I have additional calls to make. You want to have as much data available for you to dial on every single week now marcus how did you do it how did you well when you were dialing your own leads right right now what i personally like to do i make monday my office day i might here and there schedule an appointment for monday for the most part though it's my office day i try to keep it clear and i'll wake up nice and early and i'll set you know, everything arranged and just get on the phone and start pounding it and scheduling out my biggest priority is for me to have five, six appointments for Tuesday, and then start trickling to Wednesday. But I always leave a little space for me to dial during the day as I go on on my appointments and I'm out there. Then that's how I start filling up the following days or the week. And I'll run Tuesday through Saturday. Usually I make Saturday like a half a day and I only do like two or three morning appointments. And, um, and I'm able to, to do very well just from that. Last week, I submitted around 16000 The previous week, I submitted around $20,000. And that's exactly from the same lead flow. So maximize your leads, guys, and get ready to get as many no's as you possibly can as early as possible. Reach out to your uplines. Reach out to Marcus. Reach out to me when you're in the homes because we're going to help you close. Marcus, I've only been doing this for two years, and I write good business. But how many times a week do you think I call you from a house? Once a day. Once a day, right? Like I hit him up that yeah. much. 
If I'm oh not yeah. Sure Text, really, since I have a question. You're writing questions, yeah. Exactly. I can more than happy to. If we have a special group me from mortgage protection sales, which is a couple other uh, moderators, including myself, managing it. So by all means, if you haven't got access to it, reach out to Luis, reach out to me, Facebook, whatever. I'll get you added to that group. But um, I'm not not afraid to answer questions about underwriting, product of design, which way should I go with this person, and structuring. More than happy to help you. Um, with that being said, too, my, my week is totally different. So my week would typically will start on a Monday or I start on a Saturday for dialing. Dialing 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on a Saturday to book up for Monday and Tuesday uh, between, uh, anywhere between try to get seven to nine appointments between both of those actual days. Sometimes the target's 10 uh, when I was personally dialing. Um, and then I would run Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday would be the office day or any type of amendment day type of deal. And then I would do my dialing that Wednesday evening again for Thursday and Friday. Uh, Thursday being the full day, Friday being the half day with Sunday off throughout the actual week. Um, my typical schedule with my setter though, she's going more of a, she'll dial on Mondays and then I'll just run appointments Tuesday through, through Friday, typically speaking. So that's great. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I'm going to get out to a dialer soon. Um, but I, I love, I love starting to develop the relationship on the phone when you're talking to these people, because they might say one little thing here that you'll remember or you'll write down and you'll be like, oh yeah, when you called, you said this, or we spoke about this, or you asked me this question, you know, and it kind of just already makes you a little relatable to them. I like to send from the CRM, from the partnership, we have that go high level. From there, I send a text message to everyone that, um, to everyone that I book an appointment with and they'll say, hey, great speaking with you. Um, here's my contact information. I'll have a link to my digital business card where they open it up. They see a picture of me and the family and all the companies we work with. And I'll say, just recognize my face because I'll be the person to knocking on your door and our appointment schedule for this day at this time. And I'll put, please don't reply to this, to this uh, number as I most likely won't be seeing it for a while. That way, if they try to cancel, I show up anyway, no matter what right? That's going to be huge. Whoever cancels, it's their fault. You're still going to be at their door. And then if they say anything at the door, then you go ahead and reschedule it. Um, but there's been one too many times that I've gotten to a house. And no, so no, that, that's huge, man. I just learned about the ringless voicemail and the mass text messages that you can do from the CRM. I learned yeah. about that last, last Friday and I'm about to go nuts with it once I upload the actual leads because that's a huge feature. You guys understand how big of a feature that actually is to be able to one, not only track your actual clients and the status of each individual client and leads, but also be able to text them, ring this voicemail, dial from that CRM. You can track how many times you called them, how many times you texted them. Um, it's just an invaluable tool. Like I said, I feel like I've been in the stone ages the last six years doing this uh, because I was doing old school. I have, have a phone, got Google Voice, got a uh, flip, name all the different phone apps you can have to change your phone number just to kind of get some type of ambiguity going and get them to pick up the phone. But with that CRM, it's a totally different ball game now. So I'm super jealous. You already learned that before, before me, uh, but no, it's awesome, man. But there's so much more that CRM does, right? And like, we, we should have also like a weekly CRM call just because there's, it's got such, so, so many different capabilities of the things that it can be done that I know that I'm not maximizing it too, but that's okay. So guys, just going back into it, right? Biggest takeaways and mindset is going to be have, th have tough skin, get ready to have good lead flow, right? Make it that you know that this right here is an investment. It's not an expense when you're buying leads. The more leads that you're able to get for yourself, the better it's going to be for you. So make sure that you have a consistent lead flow and that you have a budget set aside. So no matter what, good week, bad week, you're putting in those lead orders to come in. For the ones that might not be able to get just fresh mortgage protection leads right away, start working those final expense leads, right? We luckily are with IFG and luckily we have an awesome system where we can get our, our telemarketing leads for us to run regular final expense appointments at a discounted price. You can get a lot of leads for good pricing. So maximize your schedule, get out there and grind it out, build up your bank account and go ahead and focus on what you wanna focus. And if mortgage protection is the route that you wanna take, set it up so that you have a consistent 
flowing business at all time and just get in front of as many people as possible. The faster you do those 100 sits, the faster you're gonna see every single whatever could come up, come up, and then you'll know how to address it and how to handle it. And when you don't, reach out and reach up because that's how you grow and that's how you learn. Uh, I think let's go ahead and open it up for questions, guys. We've been on here for about 30 minutes now, and I wanna make sure that we can touch on the things that you guys are kind of wondering about. So what is it that, uh, that we could tell you or help you help answer for you? I have a question, please, or actually a couple. Go ahead, Nick. Um, as far as persistency goes with the um, mortgage protection, how does that compare with the final expense? I'll answer this one. It should be a lot higher, to be honest with you. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why. The first and foremost is going to be your clientele, right? Final expense, you're seeing a lot of people that are on fixed budgets. They're going to be getting their social securities, and that might be it. They might not have that much more. Do you run into that, Nick? With final expense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've, oh, okay. I've, the past week, I've just gotten murdered. With okay. It. So it happens, man. It's just, you know, the NSFs, no, no funds available. Uh, you have to schedule it the right way. Like you just have to put it out there at the same time with final expense. And you should do this for every customer, no matter what, but there's just a million agents out there trying to work those same people that fill out the leads. So it's important to try to see how you can go outside of those. That's why I do like the telemarketing leads, but they're getting calls from other people too. So it's going to be important for the final expense clientele for you to set yourself apart, not only are you giving them the best product, but you make sure that they know that anybody else comes in behind you or anything else happens or they see another advertising, that they reach out to you first, that you are their person, you are their insurance agent. Dusty Edwards says that he is their case consultant and that they have to call him before making any other life insurance decisions. And, and many, many do. But then that way, nobody else can go behind you and replace it or bad, bad talk to policies. Now, to just answer your question, you'll see a way higher persistency because now you're sitting with people that have a house, that just bought a house or just refinanced. And we know that the laws have gotten so much more stricter since 2008 when we had the housing bubble, right, pop. And now they have to be a 30% loan to value on their income. So they're going to have a little more room available for them to spend, I don't know, a hundred bucks. You'll run into some people that hundred bucks might be a stretch and that's just a mindset because they just don't believe in insurance. But if you can put the right product in front of them, all of them are going to have around a hundred bucks and always show high, always show high. Cause then that's, if you don't show high, you're not going to have that opportunity, right? But you can always show high and work your way down. You can work your way up. Just, anyways. So you will not have as much persistency problems with people coming in behind you if you're offering the right product from the beginning and you won't be running into as much no funds available because these clientele may have a little more money to them. Does that answer your question, Nick? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a couple more if you don't mind. <laughs> Sorry. No, man, knock them out, dude. I, I like people yeah. to talk, so hit, hit us. What's the most common demographic as far as like age and income go with the, with the uh, mortgage protection? You wanna take this one, Luis? Yeah, but I'm not really getting the question. <laughs> so the average age, um, most leads that do come come back into us, my average age was 51. Um, income wise, most people, at least if they're a household, they're making anywhere between four to five thousand dollars combined. Um, depending on where you are, like I don't know what state are you in, Nick? Uh, I'm in Florida. In Florida, uh, what part of Florida? Uh, uh, Sarasota, Florida. Sarasota. Okay, so. Florida's different. I uh, can't really speak on Florida because it's so hit or miss. Um, what I found a lot in Florida, a lot of people on disability. So it's always a skewed number in terms of you're either going to have the really rich houses, or you're going to have the really, really poor. There's this very small middle class that is actually working in, in Florida. Now, I'm speaking of the Orlando area. I'm speaking of the Tampa area. Uh, those are the two places I've actually worked in actual Florida. So um, but it's still, I mean, that's kind of the average. I mean, like I said, most leads that come in on a mortgage protection lead card, they're going to end up being in between 35 to 75. Um, yes, you, you get some older folks that do get mortgages still, but they can't just, just discriminate and they do fill out those actual cards. 
the majority of the folks you're, you're actually sitting with, I mean, they're going to be between the ages of typically 45 to 60. That's kind of the bread and butter spot. And they should have anywhere between three to 5,000 of income uh, coming in, typically speaking. Um, now, with certain vendors, you can filter. I mean, you can go to a mail house and you can filter out demographics to your exact specifications. But like I said, um, you want to have a good, happy medium. We're getting all walks of life. So you're not just isolating the most, the rich people, because what's going to happen? They're going to tell you every single time, well, I got to talk to my financial advisor. I got to talk to my financial advisor, my financial planner, all this other stuff that they're not going to let you get as a trusted source. You try to go to the high end space as well as you try to go to that final expense style space. Um, they're probably not going to be able to afford that additional cost. Um, did that answer that question for you, Nick? Yeah, that, that it does. Thank you. And that kind of leads me into the next question. So if you're kind of, if, if the majority of your, your, a business is kind of in that middle market. Um, what is there a lot of opportunities that you guys find for um, getting into the annuities and of course, Heck yeah. Like what's the question? Ready? What else do you have in place that acts like life insurance? Ask that question to every single sit. All day long. They're going to they're going to spill the beans. So they're going to tell you. Uh, I have this policy. I have this cash. I have, I think I have a 401k. Um, they're usually going to be a lot more willing to start talking about it, but it's all in the structure of the actual appointment, which like I said, we'll have another call that goes over how I structure my appointments. Um, in terms of the in-home presentation, I know Luis is a little bit different on his actual structure, um, which is, which is, which is great because my way is not the only way to do it. There's a million ways to skin this cat. So I think it's good we're going to have multiple ways of looking at different things. So whatever suits your personality and your char characteristics and knowledge base, use it. Whatever one makes, makes the most sense. Um, but it's just I found a simple question because what else do you have in place to act like life insurance? You start finding sums of money. That's all that, all that question does. It opens up sums of money because what I'm able to do is use that or lose that. So I'm either going to use it to my advantage in terms of, well, hey, Ms. Jones, you already have 100000 in place. We only got to cover another fifty, or another 100000 Or, hey, Ms. Jones, you have that 50000 in place, but guess what? It's, it's, it expires because it's, it's, it's a work policy. Therefore, that's not, we're not really going to count that number. We need to let's, let's secure a true $200,000 or $100,000 policy that you personally own. So that's kind of one of the pitches. When you ask that question, you're going to uncover what's really there not only know what you're walking into, but it gives you that flexibility to pivot and understand either going to use that coverage to your advantage or you're going to, I want to say discredit, or I would say lose that coverage in terms of the structuring of that actual plan. Um, but, hey, Mark, um, go ahead, please, I, I'm sorry to, to interrupt, but uh, I don't want to turn this into an annuity call, but I have two follow-ups to that real quick. Um, oh, gosh. What do you say when, okay, I've got, you know, all of that, I get through it, and they say, well, we, we have a financial advisor that manages our money, so that, um, that's one, and then the second one was, um, Does the financial advisor guarantee zero loss? Again? Does the financial advisor guarantee you a zero loss? Okay, that's, well. That's, that's the question I would typically ask, them, and they're usually going to answer no. say that, I think, I found that sometimes that they just, um, it's that feeling of safety, what you know, what you know, you know what I mean? How do I get past that? They're, they're, they're used to that person. They feel safe with that person. Yeah, you know? let, me, let me help you out here a little bit, Deanna. And you know what? I have a lot of room to grow when it comes to getting more annuities. But knowing that, I think you got to find two or three people within the groups here that are annuity experts, right? You got to have yourself a little more ready on a way to fact find for them to say, all right, I do have this money sitting in a stock market or sitting in a different type of account to where you start highlighting the amount of fees they're paying, the vulnerability that it has, the risk that they have. And when you start pointing all these things out and they're like, oh, it is vulnerable. It is at risk. I am paying fees. Why do I have my money in here? And then you can maybe get a third voice on someone that's going to be that much more versed on it get on the phone use the people that have the knowledge and are the experts at being able to close appointments like that you know and be nice like you know throw them a 10 15 percent like they're going to help you close the sale they're going to help you put the application in but it's going to help validate you and with that one customer where you're not the expert 
you're going to do a better job by reaching out to the expert that's going to help give you uh, get you that much more credibility with the product and it can help walk you through the path so that the client you're with gets closed by somebody else. Does that make sense? Yeah, that sounds great. Do you typically uh, uh, do that call to call the, the expertise or in a follow-up? Say it again. Say it again. In, in your, in, when you do this, do you typically do that call with one of the experts at that right away or in a follow-up? Immediately. Yeah, there's no, especially for a call, like, like my follow-ups are going to be with illustrations that I'm coming back once I know exactly what you're looking that you already have. And I'll get somebody else on the phone right away and put them in speaker. And I'll say, hey, here's where we are. Here's the risk. Here's the age. And here's what I'm thinking. What am I not voicing to them? Or can you explain a little bit farther? Boom. They segment you in. And then your follow-up, you come in and you show an illustration. You're like, look at this oh my gosh and most of the times you know they'll love it like you're gonna build that rapport you're gonna build that trust and then they should feel a little more confident in being able to move some money around with you thanks got it yeah definitely always bam fam the annuity sales don't try to illustrate instantly i've made that mistake numerous times before um we also don't want to mudsling the current financial advisor just like deanna said they've been knowing that person they trust that person they feel comfortable the last thing you want to do is mudsling that person and make them feel as if they're the bad guy. Um, but there are constructive things to ask and point out. Like I said, are they, you guys paying any, any type of fees? Can they guarantee there's no uh, uh, capital loss in the actual marketplace? Um, what's the average rate of return? I mean, there's different things you're able to point out and the accessibility to those funds. I mean, there's different things that annuities do very, very well. Um, that you can kind of fill those gaps, especially in this kind of market where it's, it's topsy-turvy. I mean, with the pandemic going on, it's up one month, it's down, it's down the next. I mean, it's a very unbalanced market currently, so there is a lot of people looking to move things, but it has to be for the right reasons with the right people. So um, don't try to all do it in a single sit. Reach out to the actual expert. So uh, like I said, Deanna, you can reach out to me. I've helped you numerous times on this, or we can get you in the phone with Shauna, Shauna Bruce or Cindy Schneiderman, I mean, or EJ Myers. I mean, there's a couple people that I trust that have done it very, very well with the nudity space, as well as some of the new guys we brought onto the actual um, advisory board as well on the partnership side that focus on the wealth management piece. So it's a bunch of people reach out, ask for help. We can plug you into the right people. You can pick their brains and have a better approach, but um, definitely the common denominator is always to bam fam it or get that expert on the phone and then come back a week later with the actual illustration. Um, Cause you don't want to make it think because the big thing is you don't want to make it seem like everyone can have access to it. Um, there's some people that don't qualify from a suitability standpoint. So that, that uncertainty um, kind of that lets them sleep on it a bit and kind of, well, what if I can't get it, but I really like what he's talking about. It's, it's going to increase that show ratio for that next appointment to make sure they're going to be there and actually see the, il the illustration itself. So um, okay. yeah, let's, terms, let's see uh, what else we got here. Yeah. The CRM question. Um, one, you have to see if your CRM set up for it. There's a special feature in order to upload, um, which I can make sure, I can check on that, Deanna, for you, get that set up on yours. But also, Matt Murray uh, did a call with Derek Cullum that I post, or he posted on Innovative and Friends that kind of goes over this ringless voicemail and texting. And there's a couple training videos on it. But no, we are going to have more training videos on the actual CRM. Um, it will probably be done by people smarter than, than us, uh, leaning on Matt or even Ryan Strathmire to kind of do some of those calls because it is a robust CRM that, uh, like I said, I'm scratching the surface of it. So I don't feel comfortable doing a training on it because I don't know it 1000% through and through, but it will have more of those trainings for sure. Anyone else? Any other questions, guys? Or Nick, do we cover all your, all your questions, Nick? Uh, just one more. Um, I was wondering if you guys are trying out any of the Facebook uh, mortgage protection leads. Uh, some of the vendors I've used for final expense are now kind of marketing, they have a mortgage protection leads. Have you tried them out? Never touched them. Uh, reason being, you can no longer market to certain demographics on Facebook. So Facebook got rid of that feature over a, a year ago. So I would say they're probably more of a generic lead. Not to say that we're not trying them. We're actually going to test out a mortgage protection lead here shortly on via Facebook because we have seen, I've seen a couple of them as well. Um, but personally speaking, I mean, only thing I've tried outside of direct mail are some telemarketed MP leads. 
which were hit their their hit or miss. Uh, to be honest, I mean, for the cost that people are selling these leads for at thirty and forty bucks a pop when they're tele telemarketed leads, when the FE leads ten, uh, you're better off spending an extra twenty bucks on a direct mail piece. To be honest, gotcha. if I could uh, put in my two cents with that, yeah. I honestly believe. I swear to God, guys, I don't think there's a thing that a lead is a bad lead. Whatever leads you can get your hands on, the better it's going to be, right? So I bought some mortgage protection leads through um, a Facebook vendor in the past. I think it was the Lead Gorilla. And I've had success with one or two of them. It hasn't been anything, you know, great. But at the, at the same time, my sample size was smaller. No matter how you look at it, whether they're filling something out online, whether they're filling something out and mailing it back in, they're filling something out. There was something in their brain that sparked interest, right? And so now it's our job to mess it up. I don't care where the lead comes in from. A lead is a lead. Just make sure that you're consistent and you have your flow and you'll be able to eventually have enough data on the leads that you've been purchasing for you to know where you're having more success. I personally don't buy them. And I'm not saying it's not because they're good or because they're bad. It's just because I do have things that I have that I see success with, so I don't have to go that route. But if you do try them, don't just try them one week. You know, don't just try them two weeks. Give yourself a quarter, three months that you're going to have that consistency. And as long as you can receive the flow, then you'll start knowing. If you're just wasting your money and out of every 20, you're only closing one, it might not make sense. But those sales might be a lot larger than a regular final expense. So there's going to be pros and cons. Sorry, I can't give you a direct answer on that, but uh, every lead to me, every lead's a good lead to me. I've uh, I've got a question for you. Got a second. What's up, the Galaxy J Seven D? Can you hear me? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Anthony. What's I'm, up, I'm Anthony? driving up the road right now, but I just wanted to talk to you. So, what the, what areas of the U.S. are you guys working in right now? I'm in Southwest Florida. Okay. Yeah, I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina but I'm actually selling in Ohio still. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, you stressed a, a huge importance on uh, having a proper lead flow. What are the, the names of the vendors that you guys prefer for the direct mail mortgage protection? Whatever's available in your area. <laughs> it's just, you know, what, I, what I'm using might not be available for you, depending on where you're at. Where are you at, Anthony? Uh, technically, west of Charlotte. Okay. So are you in North, North Carolina? Correct. Yes. All right. So I'll just give you the scoop right now. MP cool. is limited in terms of direct mail vendors. The only way to do MP in North Carolina as it sits currently is going to be doing a mail drop. So I would reach out, reach out to me, reach out to Luis, but we're going to get you in contact with Chad Dawkins. He's our lead specialist. I think it's cdawkins at teamifg.com is the actual email address. Um, we can do accounts and get you in contact with Plum Marketing. And that's going to be honestly the only way to do a mail drop in North Carolina. Because um, most of the vendors, especially in Charlotte, are already taken up, whether it be MailCo, LeadCo, uh, One Life, um, who else we got? Power Mail. I mean, you name them. Most of these higher, I mean, these, these areas, the mortgage protection, I mean, backtrack. Mortgage protection is done via county. So once someone gets a county, that county gets blocked out from that actual company. They're not going to resell sell the lead. Unless they're mail code, they might do two people inside the same county. But typically speaking, um, reason people kind of gravitate towards that mortgage protection space because they know that certain vendors, they, once they get locked out, they're locked out. No one else can get into that actual county with that same company. And there's only so many good quality MP vendors out there to once there's, they're almost all taken up, especially in that Charlotte market. Because I have agents that aren't too far from you. So my Charlotte agents end up driving to Columbia, South Carolina, just to have lead. Um, that's where they're running most of their business at. So just, just reach out, uh, send me a message on Facebook, uh, mpagan at TMIFG is our, my email. I'll get you in contact with Chad Dawkins and we can look at a lead program for you and just see what's available where you are and then um, kind of figure out that actual beast for you. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. And Anthony, just to add on to that, I personally moved. I uprooted myself, my family, just to get to a territory where I had better lead flow. I was in uh, East Florida, and it's just it's saturated with agents, but it's, it is what it is. At the end of the day, as long as you can find the right source of leads, then you can stay where you're at or relocate. But being or finding those leads is just going to be the 
the art form, right? So reach out to Chad Dawkins. He's got the contacts to a lot of different mail houses that we use. So he can put an email in and find out what's available. And if not, you know, see what companies he's reached out to, get on the phone yourself and start finding out. Because if you find that one mail house that had somebody drop that, that mortgage area for whatever reason, then it's your opportunity to jump on it and take it. So take ownership on that, just call around and maybe you'll find some nuggets or some gold after that somebody else has intact. Gotcha, thank you. Are you sure. non-resident licensed any, anywhere else? Out of curiosity? Uh, so, I mean, yeah, North Carolina and South Carolina. Uh, I mean, obviously the, the ideal scenario is to work location close to where I live. Um, have I'm you ever post- considered doing Zoom for mortgage protection? I, 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 I'm a huge face-to-face person. Gotcha. Right. Me too. Yeah. Absolutely love it. No, that, that makes sense. But yeah, reach out. Like I said, we'll get you some counts and get that figured out for you. See what is open or what the next steps could be to get into that MP space. Oh, no. Hey, Marcus, Deanna keeps asking, what's my weekly numbers lead to close? Yeah, spill, spill your numbers, man. I know, I know you know them. <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't know if I know them as good as, uh, as, as it sounds, but I know that I get 80 to 100 leads a week, 80 to 120 weeks leads a month, right? And with that, I'm going to go ahead and schedule my appointments. I know that at a minimum, I'm going to sit down seven, 10 appointments a week, you know, and the maximum I'll sit down 15, 20 appointments for the week. And out of that, if I sit in front of somebody, I easily have a 75% closing ratio or higher. These mortgage protection appointments can be very lucrative if you're doing it the right way, if you're conveying the right emotion and the right care to the people. And so if I sit down with 20 people and I'm closing 75%, that's 15 closes. You know, if I'm sitting with 10 people, 75% that's seven and a half. And so hard to say exactly. I hope that answers your question, Deanna. Um, let's see. I mean, Josh, it's a big thing for you, though. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the ROI. I mean, if you're spending, if you do the math on it, how much are you spending a month? Six grand? Five, five to six. All right. And you already wrote, you said 12 and 20? Yeah. And I mean, 30, I got 32,000. The first, dude, the first three months that I was with IFG, I've only been with IFG guys since June. Um, June, yeah. So June, July, August, September, right? So four months. Uh, the first, two months i was literally only spending about three thousand dollars and i probably got paid around 13 to fifteen thousand deposit into my account so i've cleared netted positive over ten thousand every single month easily once i realized that things are going well but i needed more leads is when i doubled down so now i'm around five to six thousand and with god's grace it'll be like last month Last month, I got deposited around 25000 and I spent five six. So, so far, it's working. Yeah, so all through hopefully. those months, so, so, so for number's sake, you spent about twelve grand for about 60000 in premium. So that's, that's it's actually more premium than that. That's what it was deposited was 60000 based off the partnership. Yeah, exactly. So that's you're looking at a, a 5X yeah. return. So that's that's almost right in line with the MP. So MP, if you can do a three to seven time return on your actual lead investment, you're doing perfect. Um, if you're already doing those similar numbers, you're with, hey, I'm maximizing, I'm getting a 3X return or 4X or 5X, it's time to scale up, add more money to your lead volume. That's how you're gonna end up making more more money. Uh, a lot of people get it twisted about, I have to close every single deal, or I have to be at an 80%, 90% closing ratio. In many cases, that's not, the, that's not the secret sauce behind it. If you can scale your leads, you will make more money and still be profitable. Uh, it's, it's a simple math equation. If it's not so much about, I need to close everyone. You can still close 50%, but if you scale your leads, you still make double the actual money and you're still positive cash flow. So that's just a, a huge misconception. A lot of people don't realize that's why Luis harps on leads, which I totally agree. Um, whether it's buying the B leads from one to five bucks, 50 cent. I mean, you name it, we have access to it. Um, but it's, it's scaling up those leads. Someone that's brand new, just to get the simple nugget. The goal is to get the bank three grand. If you can bank three grand off of B leads, FE leads, and then make that jump, because mortgage protection is going to require you to spend at least 500, 600 bucks a week for four weeks straight. It's, that's just the way the math works. It's how, that's what's going to happen. 
But if you can get to that three grand nest egg before you make that leap into the MP space, you'll be a lot more successful in terms of having the ability to make those sales and having the cash flow to follow it up. So any other questions, guys? Anything else we got a burning desire to cover or talk about briefly for you? Really quick, good morning. What's going on, Joshua? Hey, guys. So uh, just so I understand, Marquis, start with FE, scale to three grand, then switch over to MP. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so I would start with the final expense. So all my new agents, we get them on the FE program because leads, the, it's just cost of capital or cost of o- overhead expenses. For people. They're ranging from 10 to 30 bucks, depending on the lead type, whether it's telemarketing, Facebook, direct mail. It's usually half the cost of a MP lead, typically speaking. So, Josh, let me ask you a little bit deeper, right? Um, how long have you been with us or in this business? Uh, I've been with this company since July. Okay, cool. Who brought you in? EJ and Eric. <laughs> EJ's yeah, EJ. awesome people. And you're focusing mainly on final expense right now? Correct. And I just got a lead. I, got, I just got some, um, some mortgage protection leads. Fresh? No, no I think they're nine months. No, okay. Uh, Mail code B leads? Three bucks a piece? Or four or five bucks a piece? Okay. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, I mean, obviously EJ is going to, he's, he's a beast. He's going to be great at teaching you, but if, if, are you new into final expense too? Correct. Okay. So yeah, a hundred percent like master it down because it, it builds that grit inside of you, right? And just really get yourself to as many appointments as you possibly can. What's good about final expense is that there's no shortage for leads and that you can get in front of a lot of people. So try to schedule at least 30 appointments. If out of 30 appointments, you can sit down 20 and close 10, you're gonna have a fantastic week itself. You know, Out of that, you should be you should paying at least eight to $10,000 out of just that. And so get that consistency going for yourself. And the more that you do it, the, the better you're gonna get at it. Once you feel that you have mastered getting 30 appointments on the books on a weekly basis, then let's start incorporating and switching up the style a little bit on, on your lead flow to be able to get some more quality if possible. Not that, not that final expense is not quality. Final expense is very, very quality. You just have to do a lot of burning and churning. Like no matter what, it's just name. It's just the name of the business, right? You're going to have to get out there, see that many more people. Some are going to fall off and you're going to replace it with some others but keep that consistency going. The name of the game is activity, brother. The more activity you get under your belt, the more you're going to be able to do for yourself. And then you're going to get your confidence level up and you're going to knock out this amount, this mortgage protection. It's easy. How many uh, MP leads did you end up buying on, on the B leads? Thank you for that, Lewis. Uh, I believe I got 76 and I spent about 280 bucks. Okay. So out of those, so B leads, MP, and go through the quick dialing uh, numbers behind it. The 20 to 1 ratio. So every $20 you make on an MP B lead should net you one appointment. Uh, now, if you're a killer on the phone or the area was ran by trash agents previous, it might be a little bit higher. But typically speaking, out of those leads, you should have at least three to five appointments off of B leads. That's the main reason why Luis is saying keep going with your final expense leads. Keep that going because it's going to be a transition phase. Because it's, it's a lot more work involved, a lot more activity that's involved on the MPB leads to get things started. But that's where I, I started. I spent my last 100 bucks in 2015. Um, that's literally, I got paid 300 bucks a week. That's my last $100 on leads on a Wednesday. I bought 100 of them. Now I bought 75 plus the $25 processing fee. It was 100 bucks. Some rusty, dusty leads. Ended up making one sale for 660 bucks, Transamerica FE app. And that, that's, the rest is history. I've been doing this for six years now. So that was literally my first break was off some B leads. And then I kept doing that. And so my cash flow was right to where I was on the A lead mailing list every single week. And I haven't got off that list since. So it's, it's going to be a process. But like I said, you're in awesome hands with EJ. Um, what I recommend doing, since you're on EJ's team as well, getting with Elba Vargas. That's one of their, uh, she's an MP agent as well. She's been doing phenomenal on EJ's team from an MP space. So ask EJ about her as well as don't be afraid to reach out to us. Um, what city or in state are you working those leads in? Uh, New Hanover, uh, I'm sorry, Onslow and Pender County. Oh, you're down here? Yep. 
No, we come come down. I should to the be office, down there bro. a little bit later. Yeah, come down to the office, man. I'm here. We'll talk about it for sure. Excellent, excellent. So just so I get this correct, and I did. I got four appointments out of those seventy six, and then I sat down with one to write, and I just got to go back and rewrite it. That's that's exactly okay. the numbers, man. Right there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, all right, guys, we're getting to the one hour time frame. Any last questions? If not, let's go ahead and jump off and get this day's this day here rolling. Anybody else? Okay, so then to just kind of wrap it up, two things that I do want to go ahead and touch on uh, quickly. The This call is fantastic, and we're, we're going to be here to help you guys. It's what we're going to ask for you guys to help us grow this call. So, you know, we I think we had about 17 people on here. Let's grow it. Let's get this call to 50, 60 people. Let's get as many faces as we possibly can in here. Use these calls for yourselves as a recruiting platform, too. Just be like, hey, you know, you might be at a different IMO wherever you are, but if the, we have a mortgage protection call, on Mondays and they'll see how open how informative they can be and you know they're, they're they might want to kind of join your team without you even having to coach them so let's invite some more people on here if you're not in a partnership have a serious conversation with your upline there's like the best way um, the best way to be able to like break into it um, Christopher says never done mortgage protection so definitely want to know how to presentation goes versus final expense no problem keep, uh, well, keep coming in this call. That's a, that'll be the next week's call then We'll do yeah. a presentation call. So uh, everyone else could, like, so at least for some, I didn't mean to him off. I saw the question too. Uh, underwriting, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit stricter. Um, it's different set of questions. It's usually five to 10 year questions versus, and have you ever versus the two and three years. Yeah. But with that being said, like I said, next week we might talk about presentation. That might be a two or three call session. Everyone can go to the back to the Innovative and Friends page, leave a comment on the last post you made about this call that I made. Uh, what topics you guys want us to talk about that will help us game plan the rest of these weeks going forward of what things to talk about what things to touch on um and as well as if uh chris if you're on innovative and friends if you scroll back a minute uh, or search my name there are a couple of videos i've posted of my in-home presentation on youtube so that can help you in the meantime so we cover the call hopefully that helps you out so um but uh continue on luis sorry i mean cut, cut you off no, no worries. So let's grow these calls. Let's be consistent in getting on them. There's gonna, we're, we as a team are trying to put more calls on. It's going to be for your benefits. And just remember the more knowledge and more training you guys do, um, the better it's obviously going to be. I personally want to thank every single one of you guys that was, that was on this call. Things like this help me become a better leader. So thank you for, thank you guys for being here and allowing me to do that. To anyone that I can help, you have my number listed right there above me. So if you don't have my number, now you do. Feel free to reach out. I think George, you know, never met him before, but he's reached out just to have a conversation and I'm happy to help anyone here. Um, put in your calendar every Monday. And again, if you're not in a partnership, have that conversation with your upline. It's literally going to be the best groundbreaking way of getting into the insurance business. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you so much. Right on, man. Hey, thank you for taking the time out. Like I said, we'll catch you guys again next week, Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern um, with the foundation of the Mortgage Protection Monday call. Take care. Have a great week. Later, guys. Good job, guys.